agents are new applications. Uh, there's uh, some uh, quote from a CTO from Hotspot. And uh, I came from the world of the enterprise world, and I can say that agents are new uh, microservices. And anyone build microservices in the past? Anyone build monoliths and try to break those down into microservices? A few people that my, my people, we can uh, have a like, support group after, because there's a lot of, you know, it's, it's, it's not a joke, there's a lot of things that we can learn from the past, how the people were building these uh, monolithical applications and had turned them into microservices for the last 10 years. And now, I would like to make a point that uh, your inter-agent communication will require uh, events because it's more natural for uh, describing real world using events rather than try to call and create this hush pass call of uh, services. I've been in the both ways. I've been in the API space and I've been in the space of the event-driven microservices. So we are going to talk about all these things. Um, my name is Victor. I came from Confluent. Uh, we are founded by original creators of Apache Kafka, so expect a lot of uh, Kafka uh, evangelism in this particular talk. I wrote a book about Kafka, and the most important slide, the video and slides, and some other things that I'm doing in this world also will be available in this website. So you don't need to record or do photos. This is the most important slide. Three, two, one, go. All right, so uh, th the way I started this conversation about the monoliths, it's not a secret because this uh, current modern or the current architecture of agent is uh, inherently uh, monolithical. We're writing some code. This code needs to get access to some tools. Uh, and after that, this, interact, uh, this agent will interact with LLM. So LLM would know what kind of tools available and so all these kind of things. So here's an example of the enterprise system where we need to, say, do a report or um, rather than forecast or sales projection, uh, how many um, what's the amount of socks we're gonna sell in three months. So we do have enterprise database, we have like a Salesforce, or we do have a, some sort of uh, place where we uh, store our operational data, so in this case, uh, it may be SQL or it may be some other language, so we need to have a capabilities uh, from LLM that can generate our SQL or can generate our query. Uh, we need to have uh, some planner that understands where the data is stored. Um, this SQL needs to be executed, and for the previous talk we saw there's uh, a lot of things can go on uh, when we're interacting with the databases and how these things need to be executed sequentially or some of the things can be executed in parallels. So maybe uh, during the time when we were uh, planning this query, the schema of the database was changed. So there's a lot of things can go on here. Um, and after that, we need to uh, get these things executed. And at the end, that would be great if we have finally uh, can assess some of the results. So that's kind of like a monolithic architecture. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of calls made happen between uh, agent and LLM in order to get some sort of like decisions. So that's all fun and games. But like when we're in the world of enterprise systems, there's a lot of integrations uh, we need to consider, and each individual call, usually it's like an API call, and this API call might uh, involve the, some of the chain reactions, so we need to uh, also program uh, um, this system in case of some of the failures, how we're going to work with this if some of the data is not available. Uh, we've seen some examples today uh, where the LLM will start hallucinating about certain things, saying, okay, so the tool is not enabled, but available, but let's me, uh, let me try to come up with something because I'm smart enough. So, and when I uh, when I talking to people and uh, looking into these diagrams, it gave, gives me like a very good f uh, uh, flashbacks with the world of like microservices because it, it's uh, it's even getting more interesting when this uh, this agentic system uh, become not only one thing that will do one particular thing, but actually you need to invoke some other agents and need to interact with other systems in order to get the results. Um, and it's my favorite diagram. We use this when we talk about Kafka and uh, we talk about this data mess world. Now it's even messier because uh, some of the data not even existed because this can be hallucinated by LLM and things like that. And um, even if you've done this right, you still have this problem that your agents will have a multiple interconnected uh, communication uh, things between uh, themselves. So, 
Um, I've seen this in the past, and uh, there are some patterns how to solve this, and um, it can, uh, some of these things can be solved on the, on the uh, infrastructure layer, but I think the best way to solve this in our, it is on architectural layer, where each microservice will opt out for synchronous communication, and they will start communicating indirectly through events. And one of the services will be uh, publishing these events, and other services will be reacting to those events. And there are different uh, patterns available for event-driven microservices in terms of how this microservice communication needs to be uh, designed, and uh, things needs to um, you say there is a uh, orchestration versus. Um, uh, collaboration or between events. Um, you might have uh, some high-level system that will be routing those events between a uh, different system, or you want to opt out for the more smarter approach where certain uh, the uh, agents and microservices will react based on some data that will come into play. Now, so event broker will be um, untying things together in, uh, in, in the sense of like we're going to be transforming our tightly coupled data mass into more structure where the communication will, ha um, will happen through, through events. Um, and this will also require some of the startization and there are some known tools in the world of how we can describe the payload, some of the things that uh, agents can use for routing, some of the information agents will use as a payload of the data because events can appear in the form of state change, say you have a uh, information about how the order uh, will be progressing, order created, order updated, order shipped, order delivered, and it can be just notification that you need to uh, force some other system to uh, do something. So there's a notification and the state, uh, state changes. Now, if with the, um, when we have the system, uh, event-driven system that will be um, not only performing messaging, but also performing very important uh, aspect. This is where the Kafka would be stand out um, comparing to some other system. Kafka provides persistency. And you will be able to replace some of the events uh, in the time, say, agent was not available, the time was when this event occurred, and the Kafka stored this event, it's this agent still will be able to receive this message and perform certain tasks, even in case of failure or in case of vulnerability. Or maybe this agent was not even existed at the time when this data was available, but uh, Kafka can preserve these uh, messages. These messages are immutable. It's a um, virtually uh, infinite uh, transaction log where all this communication will happen. And this different type of agent will perform, um, the, there, was a, there was a comment from the previous speaker in terms of like how to handle this multi-stage uh, interactions, how to handle situation where you need to span transaction across multiple services. We do have a patterns that we already saw this in the past, like a saga pattern. Anyone heard about this? If you want to kind of have a bigger, uh, bigger story span across multiple steps of the operation, the implementing workflow in the even streaming approach, it is much more natural and some of the things are obviously loosely coupled. You have a ability to replay, and more importantly, once you have this like a one, this distributed transaction log, you also have a uh, capability Abilities that you don't think in on the day one when you implement in agents, but on the day two when you need to implement observability, traceability, and all the things that will be required for you to do incident management after that, those things will be uh, stored in one particular place. And in this case, um, you will be able to, um, through the system, there's also the ability to bring the data for, um, for having like more context for the agents. Kafka has uh, tons of different connectors for the different systems, so you virtually can bring any data source for your RAG, for your uh, uh, context, for, uh, for context window, for your prompts, and all these kind of things. The things would be available to, um, to the agents to, in, order, in, in form of events. So um, say, like, if you want to have, um, integration with some, some system or um, want to extract the, the changes that happened in real time from your enterprise system and somehow influence some of the information that agents will perform, uh, you will be able to do this through connectors. Um, one last thing that I want to point out. Um, I was reading this article from the Anthropic about building their new multi-agent um, multi system for their research. Uh, have you, anyone using this new feature on the cloud desktop called like research? 
Uh, you should try it. It's actually a pretty cool thing that allows you to perform some of the complex tasks. Say, uh, one of the examples they follow, um, the, the request something like this, um, find 100 companies that do something to do with agents uh, and uh, like uh, put the website about this company, what kind of product offering. So it's a complex task. And they, um, they went and explained the architecture of this multi-agent system. They have a, one big agent that is um, kind of like a lead researcher that will be submitting like subtasks to different uh, to other agents in order to go and do research and after that uh, they have ability to have a feedback and get the results and attest these results are performing um, exactly how they expected and one of the things that the lesson learns what they found in um, in this article is that they said that um, with synchronous execution they uh, have simplified coordination but it creates a bottlenecks in order to how this information will flow. So they, they, they are looking to improve the scalability of their multi-agent system by implementing this uh, asynchronous execution, bringing the asynchronous uh, uh, execution of the functions or bringing some sort of the way how the agents will communicate asynchronously. Uh, that's the, uh, the way how they would look into implement in the future. And um, anyone heard about Apache Flink? It's another open source project for data stream processing and things like, um, like it's stateful stream processing. It's the, um, one could argue it's like over-engineered, but I think for, uh, for stream processing, uh, but it has a lot of capabilities for stateful stream processing. We're handling a lot of state in our agents. And one of the things that we started working uh, in uh, Apache in open source is implementing this agentic uh, framework for Apache Flink. So Flink, can uh, be this uh, framework that uh, you can use to implement this um, uh, agents and uh, things with, uh, with agents. There would be API for Java, API for Python, that allows you to uh, build data-driven data -driven agents uh, with Apache Flink and with Apache Kafka. So with this, uh, my name is Victor Gamov, and as always, have a nice day. Woo.